Hello, welcome. I am excited that you're here. I'm Laura Roeder, I'm the founder of Mead Edgar, and we are going to talk today about maternity leave for people who own a business. I'm also going to be broadcasting on Instagram, so you're going to get a little live demo of me setting that up um, while we get started. So if uh, you want to leave where you're tuning in from in the comments, I love to see where people are watching from. So you can just drop that in the comments where you're watching from today. Okay, let's get on the Meet Edgar profile. Meet Edgar. And we're going to go live here. Right here, we're going to do live. Okay. Start live video. Okay, cool. Again, I'm Laura Roeder, founder of Meet Edgar. If you're watching on Insta, you'll see the side of me. If you're watching on Facebook, you'll see the front of me. You can go to facebook.com forward slash Meet Edgar. Today, I'm talking all about how to go on parental leave, specifically maternity leave, if you're a mom like me, for those who own the business. How are you supposed to take time off if you're the one doing everything? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Got some good, good notes right here that we'll talk about. And if you're just joining us, uh, please drop a comment letting me know where you're tuning in from. I love to hear where you are. So I'm in Brighton, UK. It's about an hour, hour and a half outside of London. Seaside town, a lot of people um, come to Brighton on vacation to live in the UK. It's a pretty cool place to live. So yeah, leave me a comment and let me know where you are watching from today. I would love that. So how are you supposed to go on leave when you're the one who does everything, when you're the one who owns the business? Uh, I have done this twice now. So my son, my first child was born in 2015. So Edgar actually launched in June 2014 while I was pregnant and my son was born January 2015. So I went on leave very soon after the launch of business and the launch of the business. And then my daughter was born in June of this year. So I just finished another leave. So I've done this twice now. So I know a little bit hopefully can be helpful to you if you're thinking about doing it or thinking about doing it again. So first topic is how to prep your team for your leave if you have a team. And we'll talk about what to do if you don't have a team too. Uh, and you can definitely leave your uh, questions. We'll have a little time for Q&A at the end. Uh, you can leave your questions on Facebook or Instagram. Um, I think we have some we collected in advance as well. And Mara is going to send those over to me. It's storming outside. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay. The most important thing for your team for your leave is clarity, right? So especially if you have a really small team, it's really tempting to say, uh, you know, we'll see how it's going to go. I'm going to be gone for a little while. I'm sort of going to be checking in because you don't want to commit in advance because this is what's so hard about maternity leave. You don't know how it's going to go. You don't know if you're going to have health problems, if your baby's going to have health problems, if you're going to get a sleeper, if you're not going to get a sleeper, right? It's all, it's all a big mystery. So you want to just say, let's see how it goes. But that is really not helpful for your team or your clients. So I would suggest picking a clear date where you're coming back from leave. Uh, I did three months. I think that's a great place. I mean, I know a lot of people who own the business can't do three months. If you can do longer, great. Uh, my advice is tell your team it'll be a bit longer. You can always come back sooner. But what you don't want to happen is tell your team, oh yeah, I'll be back in a week or two, no problem. And then who knows, maybe that's not able to happen for whatever reason. So it's always better to tell people you're going to be gone longer and then maybe you can always choose to come back sooner than say you're going to come back soon and need to go back longer. You also want to clarify with your team how much you'll be checking in, right? So are you going to be on email? Are you going to be answering emails? Are you going to be on once a week? Are you going to be kind of on your phone snippets here and there? Again, it's always better to tell people that you're just not going to be available. And then it can be a happy surprise when you do check back in. I mean, I think most people do find they have some phone time 
Um, with a newborn baby, often when you're feeding, you have time to do things on your phone, uh, but it can be really hard to find any time to do any kind of in-depth work. It can also be really hard to schedule anything. I think that's the hardest thing with a new baby. They do not read the book. They do not have a schedule. Uh, so setting any kind of meeting with a newborn, I find really, really challenging. Um, so just make a game plan. You're not going to know exactly if it's right, uh, but make a game plan so you know what to tell your team for how long you'll be gone. I see more people joining us. Uh, I would love to know where you're watching from. So if you want to drop a comment letting me know where you are today, that's always really fun for me to see. And what do you do? How do you prep your business if it's only you, right? Maybe you're watching and you're a solopreneur. Can solopreneurs take maternity leave? The answer is yes. It does look a little different. So one option, of course, is just to shut down your business for a certain amount of time. And that can make a lot of sense for a lot of solopreneurs. Again, this is where you need to be really clear with your clients and customers, right? And it's always better to be honest and be able to meet what you're actually saying than to tell them you're going to be present when you're not, right? So it can be really scary to write your clients an email saying, I'm not going to be checking email for three months. That's a really scary thing to do, but it's much better for your clients to just know and advance what's happening so they can make their plans, they can prepare. You know, you might be in an industry, let's say you're a freelance bookkeeper, right? Your clients might need to find another bookkeeper to work with in the interim. People are gonna love you if you can help them make that happen, if you can give them a good heads up. And people are really understanding too, right? Most people have children. I always like to remember, even if someone doesn't have children, they were a child, <laughs> so maybe they don't have their own babies, but they were a baby that inconvenienced their mother at some point. Um, so don't feel like you need to hide it. You know, people are excited about babies, excited about pregnancy. Tell your clients the truth of, of what's going on. And it's totally okay to say, I'm just going to be entirely off the grid for this amount of time. You know, let's work together in advance to know what other sort of arrangements we can make to make sure you're covered or maybe you are going to be on email, but you're you know, answering really small questions, but you're not gonna be able to execute any project work. Whatever it is, again, go for the minimum. You can always do more, promise people the minimum, and just be really clear and honest with your clients. Uh, some people are able to batch work ahead of time and kind of keep their business going or make it look like their business is still going while they're on leave, even if they're a solopreneur. So this looks like um, writing a bunch of blog posts in advance, maybe have a podcast, right? Doing all those in advance, but still publishing them while you're gone. Of course, Edgar is an amazing tool for this. With Edgar, you plug in all your content and then he just keeps sending it out for you, whether you are on vacation or sitting in front of your computer or on maternity leave or whatever. So you might want to, I used Edgar during my leave to keep my social media going because why not? That's just a nice marketing machine that I have. Might as well let Edgar cover it for you. And you can do the same thing with your, you know, your blog, your email newsletter or not. Or you might want to just put up a message on all those channels saying, hey, I'm going to be gone for this amount of time. I think it feels really scary to step away from your business, but in the grand scheme of things, a few months um, is really not that much time. So another big question about leave, are you a person who wants to disconnect entirely or do you want to occasionally peek in? And if you do want to disconnect, how can you get that done? So I am on team disconnect personally. I like to be totally off, um, really enjoy my time on maternity leave. And I know that's maybe not possible for everyone, right? My business is in a different place where we do have a team that runs the business. If you know your family relies on your income, <laughs> maybe it's not gonna happen to take three months off, that's okay. Uh, but I really would encourage you to at least consider the idea of taking more time off and, and see if it could be in any way possible for you. But even if you're just taking like a week or two off, it's great to totally disconnect from your business. And I think the most important thing that you need to do is get your business off your phone. Because like I said, when you have a newborn baby, you usually have a good amount of phone time and you don't want to be seeing those fires happening in your email or your Slack because you're going to want to jump in and do something about it. So the main thing that I did 
was just disconnect my work email from my phone. I actually, you could obviously remove that account from your phone. I actually just uh, checked a little setting that made it stop syncing. So I didn't even remove anything, but because it wasn't synchronized, my phone was no longer you know, able to send messages or receive messages. So that was just literally one little checkbox in the settings. Super easy to do. Um, I'm not a believer in having Slack on your phone anyway, but you know, take Slack off your phone entirely. Whatever those work channels are for you, just take them off. You can put them back on. I know it's a little scary, but, but you can do it. So if you're going to disconnect, do everything in your power to disconnect entirely. Oh, another thing I did was remove the icons from my computer. So I have um, Slack, you know, on the little icons of things I open frequently. I just removed that from the little bar down there so that I wasn't tempted to click on Slack and see what was going on at work because the, it's hard not to get sucked in, right? It sounds like no big deal, check your email, check your Slack, and it would be fine if you could just read it and do nothing else, but you're gonna be tempted to get in there, start doing work, start solving problems, whatever, and maybe you don't wanna be tempted to do that. So I wanna talk about what I learned and what mistakes I made for my first leave versus my second leave. And just to be clear, all this stuff, of course, is your personal preferences. You know, that's what I love about running a business. You get to do it your way. There's no rules. I'm sharing with you what worked for me, because maybe it'll give you some ideas of what worked for you. So something that has never worked for me is being on baby duty and working at the same time. So that might mean they're napping, that might mean they're just kind of laying on the floor, chilling, entertaining themselves, which you know they do for a while when they're really little. Uh, with my first baby, I would think, great, he's taking a nap. I have an hour to get some work done. But here's the problem. You never know if they're gonna nap for five minutes or two hours, right? They're babies. So I found that I would get really stressed out if my son woke up earlier than I was expecting, right? Ended up, I was in some sort of deep focus work. He woke up, he interrupted me. I found myself getting really frustrated with him, which was not a good look, right? You don't wanna be blaming your eight week old baby for being frustrated at work. So I found for me, I really needed to have very clear childcare, as in someone else is in charge of the baby for all of my work time. And sometimes, you know, when my son's taking a nap, I might open up my email, whatever, but I know not to get too deep into anything because I know it's gonna frustrate me. And honestly, most of the time, I just, that's not work time for me. So that's something that I've been very deliberate with. Um, my situation now, so my daughter is now four and a half months old and my husband and I split the, the childcare. Um, I'm still exclusively breastfeeding, so, he kind of brings her to me to feed. That's what we're doing for now. You know, we'll see what we do next week. Again, this is totally uh, personal choice, totally different for everybody. But for now, I watch her in the morning and then he watches her in the afternoon. And she's on like sort of a schedule when we can expect her to feed. So I don't, for me, it's like one o'clock and four o'clock. I don't block meetings around those times because she usually feeds then. But again, if you have kids, she's a four month old baby, right? You have to except that some of this is, is out of your control. Um, obviously, if you're formula feeding or feeding pumped milk or whatever, that opens up a lot more options because it's just not you feeding. And frankly, it makes your life a lot easier. So <laughs> consider that. Um, so yeah, so that's the biggest thing that I've done is, okay, these are the very clear times when I'm working and when I'm not working and I'm not trying to mix the two. Um, another thing that I learned is that you really get to see where your team steps up when you are on leave and your team is running the business without you. So it can be a really good testing ground for seeing what responsi responsibility people rise to and also maybe testing out some new responsibilities. So if you have someone in a role and you think they can do more and you're away for a month, like give them that month to do it, see how it goes, you know, see what decisions they make when it's all on them and they kind of have to rise to the occasion. I've always found that it's a really, really great thing for your team to have you unplugged entirely. A lot of people have never given their team the opportunity to really totally run the show on their own. And a lot of people 
make the mistake that their team can't do it. A lot of entrepreneurs think, oh, my team wouldn't know, you know what decisions to make. They really need me there steering the ship. You don't really know until you've gone away. So maternity leave can be an amazing opportunity to go away and see what people do. So I think another thing is I just had a lot more uh, faith in my team this time because I knew for a fact how well things could go while I was gone. Um, one last point and then we will get to some questions. It's always cool seeing some, uh, some friendly faces on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, if you're just joining us, I always love to know where you are watching from. So please leave a comment letting me know where you are today. Um, advice for moms going back to work in general. Don't <laughs> expect anything. <laughs> I think is the bottom line. You know, if you're watching this, um, and maybe, you know, you're pregnant or maybe you're thinking about having kids in the future or maybe you worked a J-O-B when your last kid was born and now you're an entrepreneur and you're not really sure how it's going to go. Um, like I said, babies do not have schedules. They don't read the baby book. They don't follow the schedule. You have to be really flexible. And the coolest thing that I found is that other people are really flexible too. And I think um, we often have a big fear of looking unprofessional right? We don't want our baby crying in the background. We don't want to bring our baby to the meeting, right? Or we don't want to say, oh, I kind of have to get off the phone early or I have to reschedule this meeting last minute. Uh, but remember the internet phenomenon video where it was the dad doing the news report and then his kids snuck in in the background and the baby snuck in in the walker. People absolutely loved that video and so many people could relate to that video. So him being unprofessional with his kids coming in, it, people found it really charming and people found it really funny. And you know what? Most people like babies. <laughs> They're cute. So I found that we uh, tend to get really worried about what other people think. Sometimes we stress out trying to hide what's going on in our life. And I found it so much better if you just, if you just let people know, you know, if you're like, you know what? Instead of saying, I'm going to meet you at two, I'm going to say, I'm going to meet you between two and two 15 because I have a three month old baby now. And that's kind of what my life is like. And I find giving people a heads up in advance or just again, being honest about what's going on. People are really, really understanding, you know, most of the people that you work with, hopefully, hopefully they're not the type of people that are going to throw a big fit and never work with you again. If you have to get off a call once, or if they hear a kid yelling in the background, right? Again, most people put it in the, the charming and funny category. So that that is what's worked for me, um, being a female founder, being a mom going on maternity leave. Uh, I'd love to hear more of what has worked for you. I'd love to hear your questions. I'm gonna go to Mara now and see if we have um, one or two questions submitted during the live stream or that people submitted in advance. And I'll do some, I'll do some waving on Instagram while I let her get that ready. Look, now I'm looking at the Instagram people. Now I'm looking at the Facebook people. Very, very high tech over here. I'm literally using a trash can as my, uh, my stand for my phone right now. It's the trash can for my laundry room because I work from home. That's how things go. Okay, Mara's putting in a question for me. Okay, the question um, submitted on Instagram was, do you ever feel guilty being back at work when you have kids or being with kids when work is happening? Ooh, the classic guilt problem. Um, you know, I think this is really common for a lot of women to feel really guilty. I find, and how do you handle it? Um, I find that having that clear division, like I mentioned, between work time and family time really helps me to not feel guilty. So if you didn't hear what I said earlier, I was talking about how for me, I found that I couldn't work um, when my baby's even taking a nap because I would just get too stressed out, stressed out if the work got interrupted early, you know, if I had to go to them sooner. 
sooner than I expected. And I think that's when you feel guilty, right? But I mean, it made me feel guilty to feel like, oh, I wish my baby would stop crying so I can work, right? It's not the, it's not the best feeling, although we all, we all have it sometimes. So yeah, I would say I don't feel guilty really because I'm happy with the balance that I have. Um, and again, I'm in a situation that maybe is a bit different. You know, I've been doing this for many years. I have a team that runs the business without me. I'm, I'm in a very fortunate position, right? Not everyone is able to take as much time off as I've been able to. So for me, for both my kids, that's been a full maternity leave for the first three months after they were born. And then I've worked part-time for the next year or so, which is probably what I'll do this time as well. Right now I'm, I'm working part-time, as I mentioned, just in the afternoons. So yeah, that's my biggest advice for guilt is you're not gonna feel guilty if you are happy with your balance and also, that balance is such a personal choice, right? You shouldn't feel guilty if you want to work more or less than I do, or if you have to work more or less than I do, right? I think be happy with your choice, be proud of it, embrace it. And I think, you know, as entrepreneurs, we're setting an amazing example for our kids. So I don't feel guilty about that. All right, let's do one more question. I see Mara typing. All right. And Mara, you can go ahead and put it in if we have another, this can be the last one. Okay, how did you and your husband approach discussing maternity leave and possibility of loss of income? Ooh, I like that question because it's a really, it's a really juicy one. So of course, this depends a lot on your personal situation, right? So the situation that I'm in right now is um, my income is not dependent on the number of hours that I work. The business, Meet Edgar, pays me a salary. I own the business, so I get to set that salary, and guess what? I decide <laughs> that it keeps paying whether I'm on leave or not. Um, so in my situation, maternity leave did not affect my income. Um, you know, it, it's, it's a difficult subject because people are in such different financial situations, and we all need money to survive right? That's just the truth of the matter. And I don't want to downplay that at all. I think if you are in a situation where you are able to lessen your income for a few months, I think most people are happy to do that if, if it's possible for them. Again, I don't you know, want to make any blanket statements that's so possible for everyone. I know it's not. But if you can get by cutting or eliminating your income for a few months, I think most people in the long run feel happy that they made that decision so that they could spend um, that time. And it's not even like, here's the thing, you shouldn't feel guilty about it because it's, I, I don't believe that this newborn time is this, like, it's not the most fun time <laughs> to spend with your baby. Like, like, let's just be very clear there. You know, I have a little baby. I have an almost four-year-old. The older one is way more fun, right? He's hilarious. I can play with him. So it's not that it's like, oh, you, you know, you can't miss this crucial time. Although if you feel that way, awesome. But it's just like, it's just the facts of the situation that little babies require basically 24 seven care. I mean, they do require 24 seven in the sense that someone has to be on duty with them all the time, right? You can't like leave them alone and leave the house. So it's just this kind of unusual time in life where you or your partner or daycare or whatever, somebody needs to be watching them all the time. So if you are able to be in a situation where that's you or your partner, great. And I think the way to approach it with your partner is you just have to both come to the table honestly with what you want. You know, that's my feeling is like always lay out what your best scenario is and then you guys can kind of negotiate from there. So we're at time. Uh, those were really good questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing about how I've handled maternity leave as a founder, as an entrepreneur. It's such a tricky thing. Uh, if you wanna leave comments on the Facebook stream later, if you're watching this not live, um, I'll be checking it out and I'm happy to answer more comments then as well. So thank you. I'm gonna end on Insta, end live video. Thank you so much for tuning in today.